Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this kind of like a highly dynamic. Come on up, Neil. We got a microphone for you. Uh, there, there you go. Put that. So you get to be, you get to be the TED Talk guy too. So, um, so what we're going to do is, I, I don't like panel discussions like we saw this morning because they're too boring and everyone gives little four-minute speeches and then they give more four-minute speeches. So I do mine panels as like talk shows. So I, we talk really quick, we talk whatever. So I've got, I'm going to do this kind of enlightening talk. Neil's going to come up with me and other people are going to come, come up and join us uh, as we go through, okay? So I'm just going to sit up, down, and various people will come up at various times to talk about things. <sighs> okay, we had just finally got the slides working. Okay, so this is the rough outline of the talk. We're going to uh, introduce our new PMC members, some of whom are going to uh, uh, talk, etc. We're going to talk about Sakai Camp. We're going to review Sakai 11, talk about Sakai 12, talk about Noodle Tools, Sakai Virtual Conference, how you can get involved, something about marketing, a little bit about our marketing position, and sort of a strengths and opportunities as I see us in the marketplace. So um, let's uh, have the new PMC members uh, stand up. Uh, <coughs> where's Sean? Sean? Sean from we <laughs> Western Ontario. Uh, Wilma from Longsight. <laughs> They'll all be talking. And <laughs> Didi, Didi. She was here. Okay, well, when Didi comes in, like, someone start just cheering and applauding. Just, okay, and uh, Diego. Diego is, uh, where's Diego? Okay, uh, Diego. Uh, <laughs> we were very nervous. The first person to come up and talk, come join us, Didi, is Didi Horikin from uh, Marist University. And so, uh, Didi, just grab a chair and sit in the chair and grab a microphone. And Didi's going to talk a little bit about something that we've done now for two years that is, uh, we think is kind of one of the coolest things about what we do in Sakai, and that's Sakai Camp uh, that we do every January, and it's always in a very warm location, Orlando, Florida. And uh, I'll just have Didi tell us what happens. Okay. Hi. Can everybody hear me all right? I have a little bit of a cold, so uh, that's where I went, was just like to make sure that you could hear me. Um, Sakai Camp is a, a basically a group of us getting together, um, a collaboration of multiple institutions who just find the time of a few days in the cold of winter to work together on projects that we feel are important to Sakai. Um, it is one of the best events. I look forward to it every single year. Uh, I went about two, this is my second time that I went, I believe. And I've made the best friends. There's a group of us, the ladies of Sakai. Picture. <laughs> Picture, yes. Um, in fact, we, we look forward to having those conversations. And one of the things that we take away from this kind of collaboration, where we do these kinds of um, team building, uh, and the team building comes from wanting to do the same thing wanting to have Sakai be better, do better, and um, also to have a, a camaraderie of people who understand the problems you face every day in your institution. So um, we do get together and have a lot of fun. Uh, it, there, is, there is pleasant times in that, and it is nice to get away from the cold weather in the winter, but it's also a real time of actually getting the work done to start this. So each time we've gotten together now, we've sat down, made working groups, made lists of things that we feel are important to get done, and move forward on making those happen and set tasks for ourselves and features and benefits that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So I I'm, I'm feel very, very strongly about that. And uh, I think everyone should join us in Orlando and come next January. Yeah, and so uh, one of the things that, uh, that's been asked, and we've said no to a bunch of times, is for us to stream the camp. Mm. Right, and we kind of decide that it's not to be streamed. Right, right, right. Because we want to have the conversation be a, be as open and as flowing mm -hmm. as possible. And if you have an audience coming in and looking at you, feel certain obligation like that, right? To be uh, if you're being filmed, and you know to try and hone your message and get it exactly right, and think about your audience. You don't know who exa exactly is watching you, so we want to be able to have it. There's something about being in person that opens up the conversation, being present. There's a lot we do. We do most of our work online, over email, over Slack, over all these different channels. But there's something about getting together in person, being present, being able to just say whatever is on your mind, and 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 get things out there. A lot like what happens here too in a lot of the sessions. 
And find, uh, building upon that, Neil, after we do those private sessions of being able to have the complaints and the good points and the bad points come together, is after Sakai Camp, you become friends. I spend more time on Slack talking to the people that I met at Sakai Camp than sometimes I do my coworkers. Right, Louisa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's it's uh, so we encourage you to come. Uh, the next person who needs to come up is let's see. So you are going to talk about this slide. Okay. Sakai Eleven. Sakai I took 11. your entire Japan uh, presentation and I collapsed it to one slide, Neil. Okay. So you can talk about Sakai Eleven okay. and uh, and then um, Jeff and Kyle, you kind of come up and take the. You have a question? <laughs> So what were the what were the I'll just repeat it for the for the uh, right. viewing audience. What were the big things that came out of Sakai Camp this year? I was going to go try to. I mean, there's pages and pages and pages. Yeah, we have them. some we have some notes. So I, I think that probably the 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 marketing group is one of the things that came out of Sakai Camp. We would really have never even imagined to form such a thing. Um, Probably the biggest thing that comes out of Sakai Camp ultimately is the roadmap for the next couple of months because that turns out to be something that's really difficult to do at a distance because people can say, I could almost do this, but if I could do this and I didn't do that, then such and so would happen. And so we really, Sakai Camp is usually our way of kind of final approaching into a, uh, into a release because we can be very honest and open with ourselves and know that it's kind of not recorded and, uh, and, and so th those are the things. Okay, so let's talk about Sakai okay, 11, so which is really kind of defined in the camp, the first camp, which right. is two years ago. That's now. right. So, so how many? You guys can come up next. So how many people? Thanks, Didi. Oh, thank you, Didi. Yeah. Uh, how many people uh, don't know what's in Sakai 11? See, everybody knows what's in Sakai 11. That's great. Oh, you don't know what's in Sakai 11. Okay, great. So I'll give this is great. So we'll just give a re quick recap, and then I'll yeah, mention and, and, and potentially afterwards uh, point you to where you can get more information, more detail about it. Uh, um, Sakai 11, the top, the top things was responsive design, we, which is codenamed Morpheus, which is, uh, we've had this tradition now of naming different initiatives out of characters from the Matrix. So, uh, and it was really about making Sakai work on different size devices, mobile devices. So Sakai now is responsive, so it can, it can sense what kind of size device it's on and then scale to that and uh, deliver an optimized experience for that design. And that was like the number one thing that Sakai 11 did. It got rid of this thing called iframes and it just opened up a whole new world for Sakai and for people using Sakai. Um, there's something called GitHub and GitHub is uh, our repository and why that's important for people who are not technical is because GitHub is much more out in the open even than what our previous uh, technical process was, so it makes it easier for people around the world to discover the Sakai code base and contribute to it. So that's the significance of that. Um, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about accessibility. Yeah, that something. has become a real touchstone in the community. I've been really excited, and Matt Clare has been leading that effort from Brock University. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but a real big initiative of that. New gradebook, a gradebook NG, uh, NYU was big leadership on that, and uh, I think Notre Dame was involved, and Longsight was involved, and I think a couple other institutions were involved in that. Um, so a really, really beautiful new gradebook that's like a spreadsheet style entry. <coughs> and uh, lessons is continually something that, that the community is excited about. Lessons helps tie together all the other tools in Sakai and allows instructors to basically create a structure that works for them and for their class. Um, and Samago constantly being uh, devol uh, you know, developed and evolving. We had a new question type, like a hotspot question was in 11, which is really cool because you can bring up an image and the instructor can label the different parts of the image for the students to answer. Um, and so just a whole bunch of stuff. And PA system, which is great for administrative users so that they can send announcements out easily to their constituents who are using their system. We've got MathJack, so it's better support of LaTeX, which is awesome for the sciences. So just a ton, a ton of stuff. And if you want more details, we also, every time we do a maintenance release, we released the Kai in July 2016. We're already up to our fourth maintenance release, and we've had hundreds and hundreds of fixes, some improvements, and we have it really well documented on our Sakai Wiki page. So what I can do for anyone who's interested um, is point you to the Sakai Wiki pages of where we have our release notes, and it even breaks it down by tool. So if you want to know, if you have a particular interest in particular areas of Sakai, you can go to that area and see what were the improvements, what were the bug fixes in that particular um, section. So I think that's kind of the summary. Thanks,
So, so speaking of maintenance releases, we just got a maintenance release out like late last week. Yeah. And, and Matt, who's coming up in a bit. Um, but we want to talk about one of my favorite features in the 10.4 maintenance release. 11.4. 11.4 maintenance release. Come to GitHub, Chuck. Um, 11.4 maintenance release, and uh, Kyle and Jeff are kind of like going to talk about how awesome the new skin is for 11.4. I think that... that Oh. I don't think it's part of 11.4. <laughs> no, it's not for 11.4, actually. The skin, right, the skin is actually... Oh, it's not in 11.4? No, Matt? The, skin, the skin is in oh, Master. Shit. But it's in Master. Are, a lot of, there's a lot of demand. Oh, for, there's people there's bringing, a lot it of, bringing it back. They're bringing it back to 11 and their local institutions because they love it so much. Yeah. They want okay, to we'll talk about the new skin. Button. Okay, new skin. Uh, so actually, this ties back to Sakai Camp because this is something we, we talked about there. We talked about the importance of uh, usability in Sakai and the importance of that for the product. Um, and so we reviewed this with folks at the camp. So, um, you know, I'll just give some highlights here. So uh, you notice the left man menu is sort of back to the um, original look, and that kind of came from other schools too, including Oxford. Um, so we have that look with the uh, collapse button at the bottom. We've gotten a lot of great feedback on that uh, from users. And you see the highlighting of the tool there, uh, the wiki tool, and you don't see it in this screenshot, but that, that sort of left highlighting, that sort of subtle blue highlighting on the left is echoed um, across the top of those tools, although, although you don't see it in, in this particular screenshot. Um, just Okay, great. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> um, so, it, also in terms of in terms of consistency, um, you know, if you look at uh, say the settings for the new grade book, and you compare that to the syllabus tool, and you compare that to the settings for tests and quizzes, you'll see some consistency in those expandable menus. So that's another thing that we really tried to um, contribute back in the skin, and just to continue with that consistency. Also with icons, so also in the new syllabus tool, you'll see you know, those same kind of uh, eyeball icons, the same that when you hide a tool, is the same with syllabus, is the same with Gradebook NG. So there's that consistency um, you know, across the different tools. And uh, yeah, I'll give it to Kyle now to talk about a few okay. other things. Great. Yeah, and there's a couple of other things as well. So the new, the new skin has a fixed header at the top of the screen, so that provides a consistent sense of place. Uh, we're sort of all about trying to promote consistency with this new skin so that you always have that sense of place. Um, and uh, in various tools, you'll also notice, similar to the settings in these various tools, we've tried to match stylings. So when you go into, for example, the overview tool, uh, you'll see that the various sort of synoptic tools on that page now have a consistent framing that is echoed in things like syllabus, like the gradebook settings. Uh, and you'll find that this sort of just helps to create a you know, more unified experience across different screens. And along that same note, um, so mobile. So uh, Sakai 11, one of the huge features was its responsive design and the fact that you could access Sakai from the same URL on a mobile device. And now we've tried to echo the user interface on desktop on mobile so that you have sort of a, you know, your user interactions are consistent. So you'll get the same sort of fixed header. You'll get a sites row where you can see your current site as well as access the sites menu. And you have a tools menu where you can see your current tool and access a tools menu very reminiscent of the one that appears on desktop. So we want to be able to create an experience that no matter what device you're on, you feel like you're using Sakai. Thanks, Matt. Matt, you're coming up next because we're going to talk about 12. Okay. So um, 12 is going to have a new skin. I, my life, I live on trunk and master all the time, and right. so I just assume, I mean, I just upgrade my stuff. So thanks. Let's, uh, so, so what I want Matt to talk about for 12 um, is I kind of got a scope of 12 skin, a whole bunch of other stuff. We'll talk about accessibility. But Matt, I, what I want you to talk about is you, you sent a really good, uh, I thought, really good summary uh, about why we needed to delay 12 um, and talk, talk a little bit about, I mean, because it was kind of one of these interesting things where we thought we were going to vote or mm -hmm. debate and Matt wrote this one email and then like everyone shut up and just like it was, it was unarguable what you said. So talk a little bit about what you were thinking when you suggested we delay 12 from kind of now time frame to the end of the year time frame. Well, I think we kind of talked about that a little bit at the roadmap at, at the at the camp. We were we, we were still on the edge. We we were really pushing to try to get a release out in the same time frame we've always 
Well, we've done a release for the past couple of times in the, you know, around, around now, around uh, Open Aperio. And it was, it was really ambitious for us to try to push it at that point because we were, uh, we were kind of be behind where we normally were and we were of uh, stuff that was still trying to get in, wasn't in, and we were, um, you know, just, we, it didn't seem like we were ready. And just, you know, pulling, you know, Neil had pulled people from the community. We were looking at the overall flow of the commits and there was just so much work just coming in for 12, and that it seemed like that's when there was just so much activity happening. We had big projects. We had like the NYU skin that was just it was almost in there, but it wasn't in there. Like you know, it it may end up back in an 11 release, but it, w it didn't make 11.4 yet. And it you know, but it's definitely in master now, and it's uh it's just it's like these the, there's the rubrics and there's all these you know huge projects that weren't quite ready. They, were, they weren't going to be ready to cut, and they weren't definitely ready to test. And, and even if we had testers, which we didn't really have at the time, we didn't have it. And people were saying, oh, we'll probably have more testers in the summer. We'll probably have a lot more people available to do this stuff in the summer. So we're like, okay, let's just focus on getting out 11.4, which has to get out. There's, we've been piling up issues for that, too. We can't run two projects at once. So, And then... All these schools were also coming back and saying, um, we're not going to upgrade mm -hmm. to 12 in the summer anyway. We want to just, um, you know, at long sight, we had a lot of schools that just wanted to get to 11, and yeah. We, yeah. we wanted to get them to 11. You know, get, being on Git on this whole new management system is a good place to be, and so we were just happy to get people onto 11, get people onto the new skin architecture, and... Um, you know, one step at a time, and if we can get them to the, you know, the improved skin at 11, that would be really good. So. Yeah, yeah. Nobody was really mm -hmm. looking at moving to 12 this year. Every, you know, the schools that haven't moved to 11 were looking at going to 11. The, the mm -hmm. schools that were on 11 mm -hmm. were looking to improve it, and mm -hmm. yeah, nobody was really looking at going to 12. So, Mitch, you're next, so you can walk your way up here when, uh, yeah, come on up while we talk. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I like that, and I think the the one thing that you mentioned in the email that you kind of didn't mention is that it gives like a whole summer. Right, right, for us to like to, code to like crazy, it. right? And, and the schedule timing, it changes it. So now what we're pushing it, we're looking for a quarter four release, and then we probably have a dot one out by, you know, quarter one, and then people will be confident to run it by next summer. By, you'll have a one or dot two, and then you'll have people adopting and picking it up, and we'll have a better, I think, release. For you you also had an, am, an amazing analysis of this, like, Mm -hmm. constant number of commits divided yeah. by, I don't remember what it was, <laughs> but it's like, look, the last four times we've done this, there is this sort of constant, Matt's yeah. constant of, you know, and we haven't reached Matt's constant for 12, or I don't remember oh, it, exactly. It's, it's down, it's, and it's finally down for the summer. Like, we, we were pushing like 50 or 60 commits. We just could not pull requests. We yeah. could not keep them down, like all through the last couple of months. And now we're down to like 30, and it's starting to like kind of paper off where we can actually say, okay, we're, we're, we can almost... Now, we'll talk about it tomorrow at the PMC, but we can, we can say we could, we're almost ready to basically say, okay, 12 is ready to freeze, or we're ready to cut 12, yeah. and now in our testing mode, so it's pretty cool. nice. Thanks. So, thank you. So up next is uh, Mitch from uh, 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 Noodle Tools, and uh, for those of you last year, the Noodle Tools kind of burst on the scene in the May-June time frame, <laughs> and now, you know, that we've been around for a while, and so uh, Noodle Tools is interested in... Noodle Partners. Noodle Partners is, the name of the is interested in uh, putting more social elements, and so we got three slides for you. Tell me when to switch, Mitch. Uh, They're sure. right there in front of you. Yeah. Right oh, there. It's right. the same thing. Uh, so this is stuff that we are uh, running um, uh, for the Grazia Dio School of Business uh, at Pepperdine University. I've been running it for uh, this past year. Uh, the tools that we uh, added uh, that have been up uh, are, this is our um, home screen uh, in a course, uh, and uh, the this, you can see basically four tools here, although one you probably don't recognize. It says, Welcome to Music Editing and Film. That's a, just a little widget that you can put on the screen to tell you what, where you are. It just pulls the course info. Uh, down the column, we have a tool we call the Commons. Uh, I was at a sort of ad hoc uh, meeting with Neil and a bunch of other folks yesterday about the forum tool and how to modernize it. Uh, and one of the discussions we had was about the distinction between uh, the forum as a place to simply chat versus to have a, maybe a more rarefied discussion or to talk about um, 
to talk about things uh, that are directly related to the course. Uh, this is basically modeled off of Facebook, and so uh, it's, you can't really see it in the screenshot, but at the top it says what's on your mind, and then people can post stuff, including linking to images or, or linking to URLs, and it works more or less like the, um, uh, the way it would work on Facebook. Uh, and it's, it's organized in the sort of now conventional way where the uh, most recent is at the top, not at the bottom, and the uh, um, responses go in chronological order. And they're not threaded, they're just boom, boom, boom answers to, to the original post. Um, uh, the next is our sort of simplified calendar widget uh, in the top, uh, the top right there. Uh, the, um, the top right, the, the, that doesn't show any uh, events, unfortunately, but it, in, in its full form, you would see what events there were, and you can click directly from the list of events down below and go straight to the event or whatever it is that, that maybe you have an assignment to. We did that because the, syn the synoptic calendar is um, not, uh, how, how can I be polite? It's not the most user-friendly uh, implementation, and if you try it, you'll find uh, that it takes quite a number of clicks, if, at, if it's possible at all, to go from the thing that's being advertised on the calendar to the thing you have to actually do. Um, and so, uh, and it's also rather uh, larger than this uh, is. And below, um, you see our, uh, unfortunately named in this context, uh, roster. We call it the site member tools, but the title uh, is roster. That shows you uh, who is in your class with you. And I should have mentioned at the beginning that the focus of these tools, to some extent, is for uh, online only students. And if you're somebody who never actually sits in a room with your fellow students, if you want to build a sense of community, uh, the idea of seeing their faces staring at you when you go to the home screen of your course, actually we feel adds something important. Um, you can see just barely there on the bottom, it's sorted by uh, the instructors first, then the teaching assistants, and then the students. However, within that, the people who are online are sorted first. So Jeremy Rudy, who's the instructor in this course, uh, you see that little green dot uh, is actually logged on, which you know because it's a screenshot that was taken of that. Uh, and when you click on Jeremy Rudy, it will actually give, offer you a little uh, window uh, that uh, I can give a shout out to these two gentlemen from NYU who kind of uh, looked at it and c gave us some comments on it. Uh, the, the, when you click on it, it offers you, instead of going straight to the profile, you can either go to the profile or, or it will show you their Twitter or, or Facebook handle, and if you click those, you can go there, uh, or, or email. Uh, so that's a sort of, again, trying to deepen the social interactions by making everyone's communication more, uh, more evident. Uh, and these are more like in the contrib tool area? They are all in the contrib tool area, and I'm discussing the idea of getting them added uh, in some way. Uh, the roster tool actually could m be merged with this, because it's kind of not that different in some ways from the administrative roster tool. Uh, so I'm a, a little hesitant to just uh, throw it in there, but we will talk about how that's going to happen. And if you would click, uh, the top uh, shows you this alert system, because right now in, in uh, Sakai, if, you, if something happens, you have to generally go look for it. It doesn't come to you. It might come to the home page of your course, but if you're in four courses, you have to look at four courses to figure out what they are. This is a global alert system um, that we've called the bullhorns, even though only one of the two is a bullhorn. Uh, that is academic in nature, the other is social in nature, so this person um, has, uh, has three friend requests, and uh, if, uh, if you uh, were to look at that roster tool, those 
that uh, on, the, on the person's homepage, his personal homepage, those friend requests would appear there. But you can see directly from this tool, you can uh, accept or ignore the, uh, the friend request without leaving the context. And that's in, that's in that Sakai 12. That is in Sakai 12. Uh, uh, and I think it's essentially vetted uh, against Sakai 11 too. Maybe, yeah. So if people want it, we can give it to you without trouble. That's uh, uh, not that hard to add. And the last uh, thing I wanted to just show, there are, a few, there are other things that we've been doing, uh, but uh, I just wanted to show one that we, I didn't get a chance to ever show before because it's not actually up yet. It will be up Thursday, is a new connections manager. And uh, the connections manager uh, that's in Sakai now is not uh, wonderful. And so this one, <laughs> Brings the connection uh, uh, brings the connections to you, and uh, it's actually accessed under your face there, under where it says Jeremy. Uh, you click there, and it'll say My Connections. It's segregated from the profile altogether, as it is in most other social kinds of situations. Your profile is is for your settings, who you advertise yourself to be, but it is not in and of itself connect, part of connections. And you can see here, you click these, um, uh, you click these connections, either ones that you have or uh, ones that uh, are are pending, um, and you can um, uh, manage your connections or search for connections and add them here. Yeah, a question. Uh, it's no question, more proprietary. Repeat, repeat oh, sorry. Uh, should we? You can see we've had uh, the four icons there: our profile, email, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, the only reason we stop there is that Sakai stops there right now. Uh, if somebody wants to add more, uh, there's. I don't have a. There's. It wasn't any. You know. Uh, ideological reason of that kind that kept it out. Uh, I, I would think that um, you'd have to make the icons a little smaller and if you know, make the boxes bigger or something. But uh, no, there's no there's no problem with it. Uh, I I think that part of our we had some discussions about this thing we've done here, which you can see the Facebook and Twitter are grayed out because they're not these people don't actually have Facebook. Uh, or Twitter set. So why put it there? And the answer is actually I think that it's important to advertise that this stuff's accessible in Sakai because I would think that if you go look in your schools and say how many people have actually filled that out, uh, the answer is probably not many because it's really buried in the profile. It's not terribly easy to find and there's nothing that you get for filling it out. It's not really advertised appropriately anywhere. And here, you're, you're surfacing things that people need. And again, it's especially for an online student. Uh, our expectation uh, is that people will deepen the, their personal bonds by, by friending each other on Facebook or following each other on Twitter or whatever. And yes, LinkedIn would definitely be a worthwhile so, thing. So, so thanks, Mitch. The next person is uh, Sean. Sean, come on up. Um, so thank you, Mitch. Uh, we really appreciate that. The, the key question there is how to merge that into trunk, uh, how much of it gets into 12, and it's a, that's a constant conversation that we're always having, right? Um, and, but you can see that what Mitch is able to do is he's able to put his stuff into production for his direct customers, and then we kind of work to get that stuff into trunk and line it up as well. And so our next, uh, our next topic is uh, accessibility and WCAG, and so um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit not just speeds and feeds, but I, I think it's impressive what's happened really over the past two years in accessibility. Yeah, it really is, yeah. I feel like I'm on a talk show. I like this. You are. I like this sound. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to your talk show. Really? Am I supposed <laughs> to be like your comedic co-host? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> not sure my role. So, Sean, Sean will be in Vegas August 10th through the 12th <laughs> at the Mirage. Uh-oh. <laughs> and he has oh a new book coming out. <laughs> you can buy it out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I do. I'm the old gray-haired guy. Yeah, I got it. 
So um, just to explain what's on the screen right now, um, so Alley is um, accessibility. So by taking out all the letters in the middle, they condense it down. Those are 11 letters that they take out. Um, and WCAG being, um, I always have to read this, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, and I should back up a little bit. So I'm not the, the accessibility guy. I'm the accessibility proxy guy. Um, so my uh, colleague down the street kind of thing, um, a fellow Canadian, um, Matt Clare, he's, he's the big accessibility guy. He's actually doing a birds of a feather right now in another room, which is why I'm, I'm filling in for him and why I have my little cheat sheet. Um, so he, he's, he's done a lot of the work, and, and the amount of effort that he's put through for the accessibility over the last couple of years has just been phenomenal. Yep. And um, so some of the things he wanted me to, to mention here was um, in fall of 2015, they raised uh, $61,000 uh, for this effort. So a huge amount of money has been raised, and that was um, from groups such as Perio, Durham and Tech, Tufts, Oxford, Pepperdine, Longsite, and all that funding, and, and UVA, and all that funding has gone into the work that has been done over the last, a lot of the work has been done over the last eight months. Um, there's been 60 key issues that have been identified in, um, by the community, and about 40 of them have been fixed already in the last eight months, and so those have gone into 12, or will be going into 12, and um, so just a shout out to Longsite, who's done a lot of work, particularly Sam Ottenhoff, and uh, some from uh, Rhode Island as well. They're working on it. And uh, one of the things that he wanted me to, to mention Illinois, is... Illinois State also. Oh, Illinois State, yeah. And, and, and what uh, Matt Clare wanted me to mention was um, the there's funds out there to get this work done, uh, but the hardest part is getting people to, uh, to contribute. So if, if anyone's interested in helping out, um, they're always looking for volunteers. So we're aiming to get to our WCAG 2 level AA um, uh, uh, compliance. And so we've got money right now that they're going to com commission a compliance statement for Sakai 12, um, which should be due out any day now, I've been told. That's so. Cool. Um, also, a shout out to um, yeah, that's gonna be huge. huge. Pretty big accomplishment. Yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming Matt will uh, send out an announcement about that um, as soon as that happens uh, to the community because that'll be huge for for Sakai. Um, also, a shout out to NYU for uh, their contributions that they've been doing from um, their groups that they work with, with um, accessibility, and then also to Illinois um, because they've been um, contributing some great testers who've been able to um, apply some of their stuff and, and um, as far as how they test um, accessibility. And um, if you guys want to learn anything more about um, this effort, um, Matt's got a presentation this afternoon at 1.30. He didn't tell me to say this. I, I pulled it out of the schedule. so. But uh, yeah, it's going to be in the cook room. So that's at 1.30 this afternoon. Excellent. Thanks, Sean. So uh, Wilma, yeah, Wilma's next. And Wilma's going to talk about the uh, Sakai Virtual Conference. And uh, Wilma is just the maker of the virtual conference, it seems. Although I know a lot of people help, but yeah. Wilma. Yeah, well, we've had a lot of help. Um, and just quickly, from a show of hands, how many of you have attended? And Wow, OK, almost everybody. I'd say a good two-thirds of the room, so I'm preaching to the choir a little bit, but uh, for those of you who haven't attended, um, it's a really great event because I think it highlights a lot of the things about our community that's really unique. We are a global community, so um, making it virtual makes it possible for people to attend where they might not otherwise be able to get the travel budget to do so. Um, so we also get a lot more attendance from faculty that can kind of showcase what they're doing, best practices and things in their classrooms because a lot of times um, events like Open Aperio or Sakai Camp, I mean, they're wonderful events, but if a faculty member has a limited amount of travel and they have to choose between their discipline and something that's LMS related, a lot of times, you know, they go with the discipline related conference. So this gives people another avenue to, um, to kind of share those best practices with other people that are using Sakai and uh, showcase what they're doing in creative ways. 
And um, not only that, but it has a couple of other benefits, and that is all the proceeds go to Sakai Development. So all the money that we raised um, through the registration fees actually get funneled right back into Sakai. We usually form a committee every year to see what's going to be done mm -hmm. with the funds. Um, so we did um, several things with the money over the last few years. We um, worked on the um, Samago extended delivery, which should be um, one of the new features in 12. Yep. Um, we did a lot of the Mor Morpheus work, kind of fine-tuning some of that for Sakai 11. And um, in this last conference, some of the funds went to um, finishing out some of the Morpheus things and also um, standardizing the calendar widget and the few tools that were missing the standard um, date time picker. So, um, so all that money goes back into the product to make it better for everybody. And we get some really cool YouTube videos on our channel. So um, if you miss the conference, you can always check it out and view past presentations and all that kind of great stuff. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm looking for volunteers, so. <laughs> and tell them how many yeah. people were, were yeah, at. I was going to say how oh, many. Oh, sorry. Yeah, usually we get around 400 people attending, so um, very high participation. And a lot of times we get groups that attend, so there's a group registration option. If your group at your institution wants to um, have, you know, a group from your faculty attend, um, then you get kind of a discount on registration. And um, some people will make a day of it. They'll, you know, we, we also send out uh, swag. So yeah, you get a little you. lunch coupon yeah. and some T-shirts and things to kind of make it feel more like a, a you know, live event. Uh, so we send you a swag package, and you can distribute that however you want. A lot of people use lunch coupons to order in and have kind of an on-campus, you know, um, Party. What's that? Yeah, party. Sakai party. <laughs> I, I'll just say, I, I've never seen a virtual conference run as well as ours. Thank right? You. I mean, maybe you others have seen it, but the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got seven tracks. It's got everything recorded. You get a t-shirt. You, I mean, it, it, it really feels like not just a webinar, right? It's, we had it, trivia too last time. Yeah, oh, right. We had, we had we had silly thing. We do, uh, and so yeah. I'm just, uh, and so it just is. It you put a lot of effort into making it feel not just like a webinar because we do do webinars, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times people yeah. be virtual conference and it's just a webinar, you know. And uh, and so I appreciate all the extra effort that goes in to make this actually feel like an event, and that's yeah. why we get 400 people. Yep. So thank you very much. Yep. So if you're interested in helping with the planning committee, please let me know, because I do <laughs> yeah. need some volunteers to help out with that. So thank you. Thanks. So we're, we're starting to run out of time. The talk show format doesn't always go according to schedule. One talk, one speaker. Uh, so just take two minutes and talk about the marketing group, Neil. And, okay. And maybe talk a little bit about the other meetings that happen every week. Okay. So uh, the Sakai Marketing Group is something that came, one of the things that came out of Sakai Camp, we were talking about we need to do, and it was kind of reflected in, by accident in the meeting this morning when the, the advocacy meeting happened, the panel, uh, and we were trying to figure out, like, how do we promote Sakai? We don't have a marketing budget. We don't have, you know, professional salespeople. How do you get the word out of open source? So we just started to have discussions within ourselves, like, what can we do? And it led to some tangible things and some things we're still trying to work on and trying to figure out how we can be effective. So it led to a redesign of the website. We had a beautiful new rollout for Sakai 11. Maybe when we do Sakai 12, we need to start talking about do we need to change the website again? We got a brochure done. We might even have a couple more uh, out there, I think. And uh, so we had some tangible things, and, and we're talking about like how we can promote Sakai, how we can promote open source, how we, we might be able to work with other Aperio projects to promote uh, Aperio better. And um, so we're starting to think about, you know, can people, we can get people from the community to present at conferences. Maybe we can work on papers together that can get published. So a lot of really interesting work. We're still, none of us are marketers. I mean, there are, there, you know, pretty much none of us, most of us aren't marketers anyway, so it's a real challenge and really interesting conversations we're having and trying to create actual actions out of that. So, so what I would add is that um, the Sakai Market Group is one of the few, mark, uh, few e email lists where it's private. 
Yes, because we talk about strategic things, corporate commercial partners talk about stuff, and so it sort of also doubles in a way. It, strategic thinking mm -hmm. goes on in there as well, and it's a great group of people. It meets every week. How many no. meetings? We, 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 so we, we, we changed it to oh. once a month for Sakai Marketing oh, because okay. it was hard to pull everyone together, okay. so it gives us time to do stuff in How many meetings a week do we have? We have a lot of meetings. We have uh, so Sakai, some of them happen about once a month, like Sakai documentation for online help documentation that Wilma also leads. We have uh, Sakai Marketing that happens once a month with Sakai core team. And the, most of these meetings are completely open. You can jump in, participate listen in, lurk, trying to learn something. So we have Sakai core team, which is developers, but sometimes we get non-developers coming in asking developers questions, which is totally cool. We have uh, you know, Jira triage, because uh, Jira is our system of input for uh, community reporting issues, so we have a triage group that reviews new issues that have come in. Uh, we got a lot of meetings. We do have a Sakai calendar, so if you and we have an Aperio calendar, so if you want to subscribe to those, I can give you information on that, so you can see what meetings are there. And most meetings, not all, but almost all of them are open, and almost all of them have opportunities if you want to figure out different ways to participate. So one of the secret things I'm talking about with the marketing group is I'm thinking about sponsoring a hockey team. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely get on skates. That would be. No, no, I already have a hockey <laughs> team, and they already know how to skate. They just okay. need Shoot. jerseys. All right, all right. So okay. I'm going to get some, getting some reversible Aperio Sakai hockey jerseys <laughs> made. So when I get these designed, I'll put up a Google Doc. There'll be about 100 bucks a jersey. I'll probably buy the, the PMC all jerseys and uh -huh. my hockey team all jerseys and uh -huh. take some cool action shots of Aperio people checking Sakai people into the boards and vice <laughs> versa. So, um, so... That's the kind of thing that happens in the marketing committee. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to? Oh. Hockey. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm mentioned an EDUCAUSE article coming out. Malcolm mentioned an EDUCAUSE article coming out in August. Uh, uh, it's actually authored by someone from Notre Dame, Alex Ambrose, uh, and uh, Kevin Abbott. Uh, but in it will be highlighted Sakai. Cool. Well, good. Good. So we're we're sort of totally out of time. So the whole the whole this slide I'll go through really quickly. For all mo, all of you know about the squid diagram, uh, Sakai in the face of all kinds of pressure. You'll notice that Blackboard's going down and Moodle's going down. Sakai's going down for the first time in a long time, and that's the loss of Etudes, which uh, was 20 schools. We don't lose too many schools. We've been surprisingly resistant. Uh, Moodle has suffered more, and Blackboard has suffered more. Uh, partly because I think Sakai schools have a better sense of the value of Sakai and we're a little harder to, to push away. Canvas certainly is doing very well. Um, you know, I, think, I think from a marketing perspective, we, we have some inherent advantages that literally nobody else has. We have disadvantages as well, and that's kind of our to-do list, and mm -hmm. we work on that stuff. Um, you know, we, we have some really good communication paradigms, and, and uh, Mitch talked a lot about social for pure online, and that's very important for that. But for face-to-face, -face, it's not, students don't want Facebook for, to support face-to-face -face classes. We have a strong resource tool, and it's going to get even better, and we use going to improve that. Our, our lessons tool really is probably the best in the marketplace, and the ability to edit a responsive content on the part of the teachers. Um, our responsive is really cool. I mean, we're going to have a boff about maybe making a mobile app, but we've made it so long without a mobile app because we just have put energy and love into responsive. And I think that's good for us, right? That, you know, we can have a mobile app, but we should also have a responsive website because I get a lot of complaints oh, yeah. about students using mobile apps talking about all the things that they can't do on the mobile app. And it's like, you know, it's really hard to make a mobile app that's got 5% of the capabilities and figure out the right 5%. You mm -hmm. were going to say something, Neil? No. no okay. Not, I echo that. Yeah. Um, like, for just an example, as a teacher who's used now both of these systems, this whole section mapping, uh, picking the sections and mapping all the registrar sections to the different courses, that's not in, like, any other LMS, and that's because we built this for places that had complex registration systems. All these other ones just like batch grab a giant LDAP directory and just pre-make a bunch of courses. Makes the navigation look ugly. It makes the user experience. There are things that we truly do better than uh, others. We actually listen to teachers far more than any other learning management system in terms of the directions that we're taking. And the project site. There's the, there's the mighty project boff or the mighty project... Mm -hmm. Right. meeting yeah. where like once a month you just like sing songs of praise mm -hmm. 
about project sites? Is that what that is? I think so. I don't. Oh, I don't you don't go to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's being recorded. No, no. I won't go to that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, meeting I don't go to. Let's see. I'm thinking. I think I'm done now. Yeah. So, you know, thank you for listening. We want you all to be involved. You know, you're here at Open Aperio. You need to come to Open Aperio. Participate in the virtual conference if you can't. Uh, come to Sakai Camp 2018. It'll be in Orlando again, second or third week of January. Put it on your calendar. We schedule early travel so that we can avoid any weather-related issues, and that gives us a little extra free time in uh, Orlando. It works out quite nicely, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, attend the weekly meetings that, uh, that Neil was talking about and help with QA. And so there's yeah. so many ways to get involved, uh, even if you're not sort of a full-time or part-time developer uh, that's working on Sakai all the time. So I, we ran out of time, and we're yeah. between you and lunch. Go ahead, Neil. I just have one, one thing to say. I mean, to be a real sidekick, I think I have to, you know, <laughs> Say, here's Chuck. Yeah, here's Chuck. Of course, Chuck. it was a little late. The timing is off. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I just so, want to get that in. So I, I appreciate I everybody who came up and helped with this presentation. And uh, I tried to make it so it was the community, not just one person. And I just have a secret hidden desire to be a talk show host. And so I, I said, Neil, you know, let's make it a talk show. Yeah, like this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for being here. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>